in this video, I wanted to break down my 2020 Astra Photography setup. I recently got some new gear and I'm always getting questions about what camera body I'm using, uh, what tripod, what ball head. So in this video, I want to break down everything I'll be using for the 2020 year and just give you some ideas if you've been thinking about upgrading some of your gear, what I recommend. So first up, we have the iOptron Skyguider Pro. A good astrophotography setup should always have a star tracker as your foundation. And I've been using the Skyguider Pro now for about two years. It's always done a pretty good job. There's a few minor complaints I have about it, one of them being the declination bracket here. It's a little bit of a pain right out of the box to set up and to utilize properly. There's ways you can work around it. But uh, beyond that, I really like the Skyguider Pro for my astrophotography. It's got a built-in rechargeable battery that lasts like 20 hours. I've only actually had it on me once. I forgot to charge it for like a month and then it was dead because I had been shooting a lot. So point being the Skyguider Pro has got a great battery life, small form factor, and uh, overall it's a really great option. I like it better than the Star Adventure in most cases, but I know a lot of people are happy with that one as well. So that's where we're going to be starting off with is the Skyguider Pro. If you don't have a star tracker yet, I highly recommend buying one. It's going to make a massive difference for your images, but I'm sure if you're watching this video, you probably already have a star tracker. Uh, one other note, if you don't have a star tracker yet, I've already got a bunch of tutorials and guides over on my website and here on YouTube. So be sure to check those out. Moving on, we've got my tripod. And frankly, this might be the one piece of gear that I change out. Uh, next year because while I love this tripod I also think it might be my main weakness right now because it is a carbon fiber tripod this is the Faisal CT3442 tripod and one of the things I really like about it is that there's no center column so you can see right here the base of the Skyguider Pro just goes directly under the tripod no center column means more stability and less annoyances uh, and another th great thing about this tripod is that it's about almost six feet tall when you extend everything, which puts it at nice eye level for me. I'm 6'3", and I don't have to hunch down all the time to look through my tripod. But again, uh, it is carbon fiber, it's very lightweight, very easy to set up, got the nice foam hand grips if you're out here in the winter. But like I said, since it is carbon fiber, I've noticed it could probably be a bit sturdier. And frankly, that might be where I'm having some of my issues is just because this thing isn't as heavy duty as something else. So. Uh, I'd recommend it if you're going to do, be doing a lot of hiking and you don't want to be carrying some big heavy tripod around. It's a really great overall tripod, but uh, if you're looking for something a little bit heavier duty, like I probably will be as well, you might want to look down another route. And there's so many different tripods out there. I really can't give you a solid answer yet, but I guess we'll have a future video for that. All right, and next we have the gear that I'm most excited about. It's the new William Optics Space Cat Telescope. This is basically the Red Cat with just a gray color scheme on it. This was sent out to me by Agena Astro, so I want to thank them very much for that. Uh, I'm going to be writing a review for them and also doing a, a video review, so stay tuned for that. It'll probably take me another month or two just because we need some clear skies, obviously, and we're not getting those lately. Uh, but so far, I've been able to use the Space Cat once. It really did an amazing job. There's just, it's so well designed, honestly. It's, they really thought everything through, unlike some other companies. Um, they have this dovetail plate where the one side is arca swiss so for all of us photographers we can just flip it around and put it on any arca swiss ball head that's really nice uh, for the dovetail plate there i also like how long it is so if we need to balance things out we can easily do that again they really did think everything through on the front here we have of course the space cat logo but if you look at the whiskers you'll actually notice that that is the batnov mask pattern if you're not familiar with that yet it's another really well designed thing with the space cat or the red cat is that they put in a Batnov mask right in the, the front cap. So at any time at night, you can focus on the stars quite a bit easier. And the Batnov mask pattern is the same thing as the whiskers, which I thought was kind of a pretty smart little design there. Uh, and I mean, that's really the main things with the telescope. I'm still getting used to using one. It's pretty much the same thing as a 70 to 200. This is, Speaking of focal length, a 250 millimeter telescope. So it's not the biggest thing out there, which is why it's so lightweight and pretty small. And frankly, I'm used to using a 150 to 600 millimeter, which I do like having that amount of zoom. So we'll see how well the 250 millimeter holds up. If, you know, if I really want more zoom or not, we'll see. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the telescope. It seems like it's gonna do an awesome job. 
And that brings us next to the camera. So I'm still using a Nikon D750. I've been using it for the last almost five years. Still holds up really well. I really haven't had any serious issues with it. It's not modified at all. So all the photos you're seeing are just with a stock Nikon DSLR. Now, if you're looking to get a new DSLR or mirrorless camera, there's a couple things I wanna draw your attention to. First, when I've been teaching people, the number one problem I see is that they don't have an LCD screen that moves around. So what that means is they have to crouch down and look up, and it's always a huge pain, especially if your tripod up isn't up this high. So the number one thing I would honestly say, if you're gonna get a new camera for astrophotography, make sure it's got a screen that can flip out. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. And speaking of that, I'm honestly thinking of getting maybe a Canon mirrorless camera, believe it or not. I usually rag on Canon. I don't really particularly like a lot of their cameras uh, or their technology, but the new Canon EOS R seems to do an amazing job for astrophotography. I've taught now probably five students that have used it, and every time has always been impressive. One of the coolest things is that, you know, if you come in here on a DSLR and you turn on live view at night, you're going to maybe see two or three bright stars. It's going to be pretty hard to do. With the EOS R though, you can uh, turn on live view and see the Milky Way in real time. So not only is that gonna help with your focusing, it's also going to help with comp uh, your compositions. You can actually see how it's gonna look before you even take a test photo. So uh, the new Canon EOS R looks like a solid contender. There's also a rumor they're gonna make an EOS R A, which will be more sensitive to hydrogen alpha wavelengths, which is the uh, red color that comes from the nebula. So I'm honestly thinking I might buy that camera once it gets released and put it here on the Space Cat. And uh, that's pretty impressive for Canon because I would never in the past say I'd ever get a Canon, let alone a mirrorless camera. Uh, so getting a mirrorless Canon and mounting on here, that would be uh, pretty cool now that I've seen how well it can work. So that's what I'm talking about for DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. Those are the two I'd recommend. Honestly, the Nikon D750 still holds up really well if you can get a deal on it, or the new Canon EOS R. Both great cameras. There's a lot of other ones out there, but those are the two that are still in my mind. And next up, we've got my Auto Guider. I'm still using the ZWO ASI 120 Mini with the ZWO 30 millimeter F4 guide scope. At first, I was kind of hesitant about this Auto Guider because I had some comp compatibility issues, but honestly, it hasn't really given me any problems in the past six months. So still recommend it and you'll notice i've got a different mounting if you watch my auto guider video i had it mounted here on the hot shoe and that was very wobbly this new method is rock solid no movement at all and uh, that's going to work a lot better the cool thing is it's just an arca swiss plate that's connected to the bottom of the guide scope here and then connected to my l bracket on my dslr so this gives you a really nice connection and i even have room to plug in my wired remote which I was kind of worried about at first, I wouldn't have room, but it, this thing can slide up and down and I have no problem getting my remote in there. Speaking of which, I'm using a Velo Shutter Boss 2 here. I'd highly recommend this remote if you need one. There's a lot of remotes out there, a lot of them don't work that well, but the Velo Shutter Boss 2 hasn't given me any problems over the past couple of years. And I just throw it in a little beer koozie with a safety pin that's hooked into the tripod there. And that keeps everything from dangling around. So I'd recommend you get a remote, Velo Shutter Boss 2 if you don't have that yet. And uh, that's my auto guiding setup. There is one new addition as well, and that is the new, well, it's not that new, but the ZWO ASI Air. You can see how small and lightweight that is. Uh, basically the way this works, you've got a USB cable that'll plug into your external battery, and then you're gonna plug in the USB cable into here from your auto guider and then the ST4 cable from the auto guider is going to go in your tracker. And then at that point, you can control everything from your phone, no laptop required. So I'm still testing this one out. I'll have a full video on my new guiding setup in the future. Uh, today, we're just doing a general overview. So I've used this once and it seems to work really well. Uh, but again, we'll have a video on that in the future. And uh, I think that's just about everything. We've covered the camera body, the new telescope I'll be using, my new auto guider setup, the remote tripod. Again, really, uh, the only thing that I'm thinking about swapping out right now is the tripod, just because it is carbon fiber. And I've noticed things could probably be a little bit more secure. You can see everything's shaking a little bit there when I 
touch it. So I think honestly this is my weak spot right now is this lightweight tripod. So I might get a heavy duty one and we'll see if that works any better. Next up, I want to talk about ball head because this is one area where I've been teaching people and they always have problems with their ball heads. Uh, sometimes they're just too big and heavy for a star tracker and it just causes problems. So I'd recommend getting something like the Benro IB2. I've been using this guy for a couple years now. No problems whatsoever. It's a very reasonably priced ball head for about $120. And I just mount this right on top of my star tracker and then I put my camera and wide angle lens on here. So if you've got a giant big ball head, Get something like this instead and I guarantee you it's gonna make things easier for you. Moving on, we've got my Nikon 14 to 24 millimeter lens. This is still my go-to for nightscape photography. It does a great job. Uh, with that said though, if you don't wanna spend $2,000 on a wide angle lens, I'd recommend getting something like the new Sigma 14 to 24. I've tested that lens side by side with the Nikon if you wanna check that out on my website. In short, the Sigma does just a good a job for $600 less. You can also get the Tamron 15 to 30. It does almost as good a job as the Sigma for about $100 cheaper. So those are the three wide angle lenses I'd recommend if you're gonna be shooting nightscapes. And then the very last thing I wanna mention very briefly is this new tracker that got sent out to me by Move Shoot Move. I've had a lot of people ask about their trackers and I've used this once already and I was honestly blown away how well this worked. Uh, this is definitely going to be one of my new favorite pieces of gear when I go on hikes into the backcountry. So the way this thing works is it you can get a bundle where it comes with a laser pointer. You put this on your tripod, you know, like normal. Then you put the ball head, in this case the Benro ball head right up here, screw it in there. Then you attach your camera. And then with a laser pointer attached on the side, you just point it up at Polaris and it should take you five seconds to do your polar alignment. And that's what I did. I literally had a polar alignment done in five seconds, no screwing around with the polar scope. And I was able to get five minute long exposures with my D750 and 14 to 24, which is amazing when you think about it. A little tiny tracker like this getting five minute shots, even up to 70 millimeters, I was getting about uh, almost two minute exposures with sharp stars. And this thing can fit right in my pocket. It takes up no space at all, hardly weighs more than a pound, I would say. So I'm really excited to keep using this one some more. Like I said, I have a full review on this in the coming days once I get tested a little bit more, but it seems to work really well. And that's all I have for you today in this gear video. So now you've seen everything I've got. Everything's in these hard cases right here. There's my nice little bag for the space cap. And uh, if you have any questions, you can leave a comment, maybe recommend some of your own gear if you've got some problems or some things you like. And then don't forget, I have all the links for everything in the comments below. So that's all I got for you today. Looks like I won't be doing any Astro tonight, but uh, anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video.